Hi everyone, I'm Sleepable. Today we'll see how to properly connect KNA pickups to different devices and how to avoid problems like noises, hum, or anything else when you're using them on stage, at home, or in the studio. Above all, a few things that you need to know. There are four types of audio signal levels. Microphone level, instrument level, line level and speaker level. Microphone level inputs are designed for microphone and are the lowest signal inputs. Instrument level inputs are made for guitars, bass or piezo pickups like k &A pickups. Line level inputs are the standard inputs designed for everything from preamplifiers to keyboards and are high signal inputs. And last, the speaker level, the strongest one, is an amplifier line level input. We'll talk about this one at the end of the video. There are also two kinds of audio cables, balanced and unbalanced. Balanced audio cables are generally 3-pin XLR connectors but can also be quarter-inch cables called TRS for tip, ring and sleeve. Both of them are used to plug balanced audio gear like microphones to different kinds of equipment, avoiding noises and keeping a good signal even though we use long cables. Unbalanced audio cables are mainly used for instruments like guitar, bass or stereo equipment. We can find two connectors, quarter-inch TS for tip and sleeve, Many of us call them jack or instrument cables and RCA cables that we can find for sending right and left channels from a turntable to an amplifier by instance. Unlike balanced cables which have three conductors, positive polarity, negative polarity and ground wire, instrument cables only have two conductors, signal wire and ground wire. So you can't use too long unbalanced audio cables because the ground wire can pick up unwanted noise as the audio signal travels through it. However, instrument pickup design is made to work with unbalanced cable only. That's why you only see unbalanced quarter-inch cables between a guitar and an amplifier. So the cable quality is really important because it can drastically reduce the noise. Some k &A pickups include quarter-inch cable or 18 to quarter-inch cable in their box, so you must use it to connect your pickup to any equipment. If not, use good quality unbalanced instrument cables. No need to pay hundreds of euros for it, but be sure that they have good shielding and good connectors to avoid too much noises and signal loss. You can also build your own cables by buying connectors and cables separately. Now you have all the basic information, we'll see how to connect KA pickups to the mixing desk when you play on stage. When you play on stage, you may have to plug your instrument directly into the PA system via the mixing desk. In this configuration, you can plug your k &A pickup in the line level input of the mixing desk using a quarter inch unbalanced cable. However, it's highly likely to get a lot of noise and weak signal. Indeed, the k &A pickup has an instrument level output and will be weak into line level input. That's why you should use a DI box to plug your k &A pickup into a microphone balanced input of the mixer. The DI box will convert the low impedance signal of an instrument to a high impedance signal of a microphone input. It will also convert unbalanced audio signal to balanced audio signal. That way, you can use an XLR balance cable to plug the KA pickups into a microphone input and get rid of noise and low signal. Be sure to buy a good quality and active DI box, which means it works with a battery or a power supply. You'll need power to get the most of your pickup. It's very easy to use, just plug your instrument cable into the input of the DI box and plug an XLR cable from the output of the DI box to the XLR microphone input of your mixing desk. Don't forget to switch the DI box on. Very often you can use a 48 volt phantom power available on most mixing desks to supply the DI box so you won't need to use a battery or a power supply. You can also use the parallel unbalanced output of the DI to send your signal to an amplifier while the balanced output is connected to the mixer. We'll talk more about the use of an amplifier in the last section of the video. Another kind of equipment can be used to send your signal to the mixing desk, a pre-amplifier. I'm talking about acoustic instrument stage-ready pre-amplifier, mostly in a pedal format, not studio rack pre-amplifiers like Avalon or Niv Gear, which can work in a studio but are not really practical on stage. Most of them are designed for acoustic guitar but work perfectly with other acoustic instruments. Acoustic guitar preamps are quite like DI boxes, they convert the high impedance signal of the pickup to a low impedance microphone signal, but they add some functionalities. Very often you'll find an equalizer, a tuner or a gain booster. 
With a preamp, you can shape your sound before the mixing desk. It's great when you know the sound that you need and want to send a pre-produced signal to the mixing desk. Connectors are the same as the DI box. For some reason, some noises, hum or buzz can occur when you're plugging your instrument into a mixing desk even using a DI or a preamp. It's probably a ground loop issue. In this case, use the ground lift switch of your DI or your preamp to avoid any problems. We just saw how to connect k &A pickups into a mixing desk. Now we'll talk about recording when you want to plug your instruments into your computer at home or in the studio. Most of the time, your computer does not have an input for instruments, so you'll need an audio interface. An audio interface converts the analog signal of your instrument into a digital signal, so you can directly play and record your instrument on your computer. Many brands sell this kind of equipment these days at different prices. The price mostly depends on the quality of the converters and the preamps, and can vary a lot with the number of inputs. The more the audio interface has good preamps and converters, the more the sound quality will be good. You can buy audio interface from 100 to 1000 euros. If you just need to record one or two instruments or voices at the same time, stay on a basic two inputs audio interface. Prefer combo XLR jack inputs so you can plug either a microphone with an XLR or a guitar with a jack cable in two different inputs. As I said, pay attention to the presence of high impedance input or a high impedance switch on one of the inputs. If your audio interface has this high impedance input, so it's specially made for instrument, you can plug your k and pickup directly into it. If not, you may use a DI box between your instrument and the microphone input to convert the signal as though you were using a mixing desk on the stage. You can also use a preamp if you want to shape your signal before sending it to the audio interface. One more time, just like plugging into a mixing desk. If you follow these rules, you won't hear any noise or get weak signal on your computer. Of course, the audio interface is not the only thing you need to record your instruments on a computer. Two other things will be very important to record your best song, a DO and of course a pair of speakers or headphones. A DO for a digital audio workstation is a software made for recording, editing, mixing and mastering songs. There are many different DOs that you can use like Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Ableton, Cubase or Luna. All of them will be great for recording, the price varies according to the number of tracks you need and options like the virtual instruments library. So you have to choose between those according to your budget and the style of music you play. Indeed, some those are more likely to be used for pop, rock music and some other for electronic music. It depends on your needs. Lastly, the speakers are an important part of the process if you're searching for good results when you record. In a studio, we use speakers called monitor speakers, which are much more precise in terms of sound than standard speakers for computer or high fidelity speakers. We need a kind of transparency when recording music, that's why we use monitor speakers. As for audio interfaces, the price varies a lot from 100 to 1000 and thousand euros. The size of the woofer, the speaker, overall quality, the transformers, all these elements influence the price, so choose a pair of speakers according to your budget and the room you have. Don't buy big speakers if you record in a tiny place, it will quickly become too loud and too boomy for you. If you can't afford monitor speakers, you can buy monitor headphones, which are less expensive than speakers. It's great for recording, not perfect for mixing or editing, but anyway, it's a good start. Well, so now you're ready to play on stage, ready to record in the studio or home studio, last thing you may need to know is how to play comfortably at home using your favorite K&A pickup in an amplifier. Sometimes it's enjoyable to play his instrument in Plify, even if it's just to play at home. You won't need a PA system or a computer with an audio interface for it, you can simply use an amplifier. To be a bit more accurate, we talk about acoustic amplifiers. Most of them are designed for acoustic guitar, but in a way, it will work perfectly with any kind of acoustic instrument, except for bass or upright bass which have acoustic amplifiers specially designed for them with bigger woofer. So you'll be able to play any k and pickup with an acoustic amplifier. To understand what acoustic amplifiers are, we can say that they are just like a PA system with a mixing desk in a tiny combo format with a natural transparent sound. In short, there are three components inside an acoustic amplifier. A preamplifier which allows adjusting equalization and gain, an amplifier to bring the power, and a speaker to convert the signals into a sound. These components can be all linked together in the same cabinet, this is what we call combo amp, 
but sometimes you can file head and cabinet separately. The head contains the preamp and the amp, and the speaker is in another cabinet. Some people prefer combo amps, some others prefer separate head and cabinet, sometimes because they can change speaker cabinet easily. It's really a personal choice. Be careful if you use a head and cabinet, the level between the head and the speaker will be at speaker level, which is the strongest audio signal level. So you must use speaker cables to connect the head to the speaker. Never use an instrument cable in place of a speaker cable. Using an instrument cable to connect your head to the cab can cause some issues or even totally damage your amplifier. Instrument cables are usually shielded to prevent signal interference. However, this capacitive factor can actually harm your amplifier. You don't need any DI box to use an acoustic amplifier. Amplifier, directly plug the KNA pickup into your amplifier with an instrument cable. The input is designed for high impedance pickup. You can use a preamp if you want to shape your sound, but the preamp inside the acoustic amplifier is already made for it. Very often, acoustic amplifiers have built in XLR DI outputs, so you can plug your amplifier into a PA system if you want to play on stage with your favorite amplifier. It's a good solution if you already have the sound you need on your amp and just want to send the signal to the PA just like you were using a preamplifier. Some musicians like to use FX to tweak their sound at home or on stage. Most acoustic amplifiers have built-in reverb and chorus, which are two of the most popular effects for acoustic guitar. It can work perfectly for other instruments too. The reverb will give space and body to your sound, and the chorus will thicken your sound in a very musical way. If your amplifier does not have built-in effects, you can use effect pedals. There are a lot of reverb and chorus on the market, depends on your needs. Delay pedal can also be great if you want to add some repetitions to your sound. It's a very common effect used on many instruments and on the voice too. If the amp built-in equalizer is too basic for you, you can use an equalizer in a pedal format that will give access to other frequencies. So you'll be able to tweak the sound very precisely. A gain booster is another effect that you can use to get more gain on solo by instance. Finally, if you hear some noise despite the fact that you use a good quality cable, a noise suppressor and a noise gate can be useful too. Last advice I can give you about using KNA pickups is to pay attention to your sound. By sound, I mean your gain and your equalization. If you play with too much gain, the sound will be likely to distort, and this is something that you have to avoid when you play an acoustic instrument. You need to adjust the gain to get enough response from your instrument while keeping a natural sound. The equalization is another important thing in the overall sound. You really need to take time to adjust bass, medium and high frequencies to get the most of your instrument. Too much bass and the sound will be moody, too much middle will give a boxy sound and too much treble can make the sound really harsh. Tweak each EQ part from minimum to maximum until you get what you need to make your KNA pickup sound good. Now you know everything that you need to know to use your KNA pickup in any situation. With this instruction, you'll be able to choose the correct equipment to play on stage, to record in the studio, and to play at home without having any troubles with your sound.